Welcome to Rebuilding a Stuart 5A Steam Engine. This is part 7, putting it all back together, fitting the cylinder along with the cross head and connecting rod. The opening sequence shows me fondling my new gasket, just to make sure it fits, and there it is on top of the cylinder cover. Having a close look at this engine, and obviously as I've done so much work on it, I've had several close looks at this engine. I do notice that it looks like it's been built by a proper engineer, which really makes a change. Everything on it is tight. Even the crosshead in the guide is tight. This clip shows me using my Barco adjustable spanner to carefully tighten the nut on the pin that goes through the crosshead. Do not under any circumstances over tighten this nut because it will pinch the fork of the connecting rod onto the crosshead and that will be a problem. And do not forget the oil during assembly. It's time now to look at refitting the big end. These are the big end brasses. They only fit one way around, so you can't really get it mixed up. Someone's put a mark on one of them, but oddly enough there isn't a mark on the other one. So first of all I clean the parts, then refit them to the engine, once again using lots of oil. This is quite a fiddly job, and you must be careful not to trap your fingers. I've bought myself a new light, because someone commented it was looking dark in the workshop, which it wasn't really, it's just that sometimes I colour correct slightly darker than normal. Oddly enough, I do find that if I edit the video late at night, after a long day, the images come out slightly darker. That's because I'm tired, I think. And after a hard night's editing, there's nothing better than climbing back into one's coffin before day breaks. This is not a sound effect of the coffin lid being nailed shut. It's just me tapping the key into the flywheel to hold it in place on the crankshaft. And now I can easily rotate the crankshaft to see what everything feels like. And it's good news. As I spin the flywheel, the crankshaft spins freely. The connecting rod goes up and down, and the piston goes up and down also. I'll just add a little bit of steam oil to the machine oil mix, and that's a good lubricant for when I start to run the engine, and it won't be long now. But what I do have to do is actually fit the cylinder. What I'm about to do is tighten up the nuts that hold the two halves of the big end brasses together just to see how far I can go before the crankshaft tightens up. And with these nuts fully tightened, then yes, the crankshaft does stiffen up, so what I may need to do is just put a very fine paper shim between the two big end brasses. From now on, this is more of an art than a science. It's done completely by feel, or at least that's the way I do it, to make sure that everything is OK. If I tighten up the big end and run the engine, yes, it will eventually wear slack, but it is likely to score the bearings, or worse than that, seize up, and I don't want either of those things to happen. So what I'm going to do now is just rotate the crankshaft with the flywheel, and you will see that even after a few revolutions of doing this, it starts to feel freer. Some of this is due to the fact that the main bearings are not tight either. Time to look at the cylinder. This is the cylinder top cover, and I'm just removing it to have a look at it. And the good news is, it has a gasket. And the bad news for me is that when I made the bottom cylinder gasket, I actually made a pair of them. Time now to fit the studs to the bottom of the cylinder. I already had these studs in a drawer in the workshop, and I'm going to put them in place with some Loctite 542. This is just to make sure that they stick in place and don't come out when I remove the nuts at the bottom. Please note, very important, this is not a bearing retainer. It is not Loctite 601, 638 or similar. This is just a thread sealant. I would not recommend using bearing retainer on steam engine studs. It's really not necessary. If you do use bearing retainer on model steam engines, it's not fair on anyone working on the engine at a future time. If they try and remove the studs, they'll probably shear off because they will not be aware that they're held in place with such a strong bearing retainer. As I've mentioned previously, this engine is very well made. A little too well made in my opinion. I had to use a soft hammer to tap the cylinder down onto the piston. Of course I carefully fitted the piston, compressing the rings before I put the piston into the cylinder, but then I still had to use this hammer, and I've speeded it up so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going round in a circle, and eventually it sits level on the bottom cylinder cover. But please bear in mind, running in real time you will hear that the hammer blows are quite gentle. I'm just sort of bouncing the hammer off the cylinder. You have to have your wits about you for this, and don't hit any vulnerable parts of the cylinder. Eventually the cylinder settled nicely on the cover. 
For this next job, you need to be tooled up. You need some specialist tooling. I'm using a small spanner here to illustrate how fiddly and how long it would have taken, and I cannot use my adjustable spanner here, there is no room to swing it. The small spanner is okay for the final tightening, because you can get a better feel on the spanner as to how tight the nuts are on the studs. And even though this is a big engine and classed as a small full size engine, these 2BA studs are still only 3 16 of an inch in diameter, so too much pressure on the nut will shear them off, and you really don't want to do that because it means taking the cylinder off and repeating the process, and obtaining another stud. Not to mention the pain of having to drill out the old stud as well. I could spin some of these 2BA nuts up the studs manually, others required the socket, and I really did find this universal joint socket very useful. I really do like anything that speeds the job up. With the last stud securely tightened and not sheared, it's time now to rotate the engine and see what it feels like. What does it feel like? Well, it's okay until you get to here, then it's tight. Just this little bit, there's a tight spot. But it's not at bottom dead centre, it's just after bottom dead centre. So I can safely say that the piston is not hitting the bottom cylinder cover. And in that case, I don't need to remove the piston. So what I'm doing now is fitting the top cylinder cover. And this is the exception to the rule. All along I've been saying this engine was very well made, but this top cylinder cover only goes in position in just one position. And I had to rotate the cover several times before the bolts would all go into their respective threaded holes. Now the engine is nearly fully assembled, it's time to just have a look and make sure that none of the bolts are over tightened. And the first part to look at is the nut holding the pin in the crosshead. If this is too tight, the valve fork will bind against the crosshead. But really, the more I rotate this, I do know what's happening here. I'm just going to slacken this nut just to take it out of the equation. And has it made a difference? Well, no. The next thing to look at is how tight are the nuts holding the big end brasses in place. I'll just give them a quick tighten and see. As I've already mentioned, I do not want this component to be tight, but if it's too slack, it will amplify any clunking and tightness as I rotate the crankshaft. But no, it makes no difference. So I think I can say that the big end brasses are fine. I'll just put the nuts back to where they were, just back a little way. I think that the best thing to do with this engine, no, I'm not going to throw it in the bin, it's a very good engine. I think the best thing to do with this engine is to fully rebuild it, put the valve gear back on, set the timing, and then run it, and see whether it runs in. And after a while, if it doesn't run in, and constantly clunks, then I will look further. But I really think, feeling at this, this should bed in once the engine's been run. As I turn the engine over, you can hear the crosshead grating up the guide. Everything's just a little bit too tight. I once had an engine that was much, much tighter than this, and it took about a month to run it in. And another coincidence, the engine that I've just mentioned was also a Stuart Models 5A, very well machined and built by a professional engineer. So we'll see on the next episode, once I get the engine back together and run it, how I fare with it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.